So there you are sitting at your desk on your computer, just doing your thing, working on a document, no big deal. And then this happens. Oh crap. When the power finally comes back on, you reach over to that power button and pray. If this happened to you and you use something like this for your computer or your electronics, the odds of that power coming back on when you hit that button are about 50-50. If you use something like this, your odds are even less. So the real question you might be asking is, what's the difference? So if you think a simple power strip like this is enough to protect your equipment, think again. The truth is, with something like this, a sudden power surge or lightning strike or even just your power going out could absolutely fry your equipment. So in this video, we're going to discuss why relying on a simple power strip could be a huge gamble with your valuable electronics and how the right surge protector can save you from costly disasters. So stay tuned to learn how to keep your stuff safe. If you're at the store shopping for a surge protector and you see something like this and it's got a little switch on it, you might think it's a surge protector and it will protect your equipment. And unfortunately, it absolutely won't. This is just a power strip. It basically takes one electrical signal and splits it into multiple outlets. Devices like this offer zero surge protection. There is absolutely nothing keeping electrical signal that comes into the house going right through this, right into your equipment. All this is good for is having multiple outlets in one location. There is no protection whatsoever. And you would not believe how many different places I go to that have all of their important stuff, computers and all kinds of electronics hooked up to just a power strip. Now a device like this is a little different. It's similar to a power strip, but it does act as a surge protector. We'll get into why this may or may not be exactly what you need in a second, but you need to understand the difference. Make sure if you buy a surge protector, it actually says surge protector on it. For example, on this Amazon surge protector, you can see it actually says protected and it says it on the box as well. And just like the other one has an on off switch, but it also has a little LED light on it. Now don't be confused because sometimes you can get a power strip like this that actually has an LED light on it. And you look at the box and it's, you see the light and you think, okay, it's a surge protector. It's not, it's just a power strip. This one is a surge protector for light to medium equipment, things that aren't that expensive, but you want to make sure that they don't get zapped. Good for household use, plugging in lamps and lights and things like that. But when it comes to electronics, you need something a little bit better. And we'll talk about that in a minute. I'll tell you what I use and why I recommend it. Now, my preference for any kind of surge protection for valuable equipment, computers, and TVs specifically is going to be something like this. Now, this is what's known as a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. And we'll get into a little bit more about why I prefer these in a second. That may or may not be something that you need, but you at least need to understand the differences between a power strip, a surge protector, or a UPS, which acts as a surge protector, but it also has a battery backup. But again, we'll talk about that in a minute. So whether you use a power strip surge protector or a UPS like I just explained, what you need to understand is that the term joules is what you need to be looking at as far as your level of surge protection. Joules basically is the amount of electrical energy that a surge protector can take before it dies or before it becomes overloaded. The higher the joule rating, the better the protection. Now, of course, with that better protection comes a higher price. So in the example of my Amazon surge protector, I'm not even sure what the jewel rating is. I'm not even really sure that it had one, but I got it because it offers surge protection, whereas a power strip does not. Now I would never plug my computer or TV or anything important into one of these unless I specifically knew what the jewel rating was. In other words, how much can it take before it dies? So I use these to plug in things that are important, but not critical. For example, my softbox that I use for filming, not the end of the world if it died, but it's not cheap like a coffee warmer, for example. So I would use one of these for stuff that's going to pull less voltage as it's being used, and it will offer some surge protection. You would not want to use this for a computer or a space heater or anything like that because those pull way too much power. Now, as I said before, this is what I use for my personal PC. Now, this is not top of the line. This is a good consumer grade level backup and you can get these that are just surge protectors 
and have high joule ratings, but they're not battery backups. I use the battery backup for a very specific purpose, which I'll talk about in a minute. You could spend a little bit more on one of these instead of buying these two for $12 and you're going to get better protection. But ultimately it depends on what you have connected and what you need to protect. I'm not an electrician. I don't even play one on TV. I know electricity is good and electricity can be really bad. So you have to factor in for yourself your needs based on your equipment and replacement costs or repair costs for any equipment that gets damaged in a storm or a power outage. Everybody's needs are going to be different. Okay, so hopefully I was able to enlighten you on the difference between a power strip and a surge protector and also an uninterruptible power supply. And I told you earlier I was going to explain to you why I use the one that I use. And I'll put some links in the description for the different varieties that I talk about that you might find useful for yourself. Ultimately, all you want to do is protect your equipment, but your equipment is going to be different than mine. So, for example, if I'm sitting here filming a YouTube video and I'm recording, I, I need power to be running. I, need, I can't afford for the power to go out. I can't do anything if the power goes out. So, if I am in the middle of recording a video, for example, and the power does go out, I need battery backup. Now, this particular one, and again, I'm not trying to tell you this is the one you need. This is the one that works for me. So this one gives me between 8 and 21 minutes of battery backup, or what they call standby time. And that means that even if all the power goes out in the entire house, I have this thing running my equipment on battery backup for anywhere from 8 to 21 minutes. So there's two reasons why that's really important. If you've ever been in the middle of working on something that you forgot to save, like a document or a term paper or something like that and the power goes out, you know when you restart that computer after the power comes back on, it's gone because you didn't save it and your computer just turned off. Boom, gone, goodbye, forever. Something like this would allow you to go, okay, the power just went out, let me save this document and then properly shut down my computer. That way everything is safe, I've got my document. When the power comes back on, you turn your computer back on, you got your file, everybody wins. So I like the battery backup portion of it. I think I paid around $70 for this ballpark. But the other reason that you might want to consider having a backup, and again, it doesn't have to be eight to 21 minutes. It could be one of the ones that gives you two to three minutes of backup. They make them where it's like an hour of backup battery power. It just depends on your need. Obviously the more battery backup you have, the more expensive it gets. So in this case, again, saving the document would be my primary concern. But additionally, the last thing you want to do is just shut off your computer by pulling the power. And that's essentially what happens when your power goes out. That can cause harm to your computer. Computers don't like to just be shut down. They need to be properly shut down. And if you're in the middle of a storm, the last thing you want is to have your computer, even if it's off, still connected to a vulnerable power strip or something like that. So the battery backup not only gives you the ability to stop what you're doing, save it and protect your hardware, but it also might protect that document that you are working on for the last three weeks and haven't saved. So that's what I recommend. Now, whether you want to get a just a regular surge protector like this, or you want to invest in something like this, what you need to be looking for is what I call the the dollar replacement value. If you look on this box, it'll tell you right here, it protects your equipment for three years or up to $100,000 in replacement costs. So obviously when you get these, you register it, you tell it what equipment you have. If for some reason this device does not do its job and your equipment gets fried while connected to this, it's replaced. So that's kind of like an insurance policy. One thing that I always recommend. And again, you can see on the box here, it's got a joule rating. It's 526. It's not super high, but all I have connected to this is my computer and my monitors. And that's really all I need. Anything else in here is not that important. As an example, this one has on one side, four surge protected strips, which are just surge protectors. But 
the other side has four Search Protect Plus battery backup. In that example where the power went out and I was working on my computer, I would want my monitors to also be on battery backup because I need to be able to see to save the document. So my monitors and my computer are plugged in here and everything else that I use that is not the end of the world but I want protected, I can plug in on this side. And again, this is an eight strip unit, may or may not be perfect for what you need. It may be more, maybe less. So again, I'll put some links in the description. And again, if you have any questions about what might be good for you, feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at the address on your screen and just put recommendation in the subject line and tell me what your needs are, what kind of equipment you have, and I will try to point you in the right direction. So I hope with this video, I was able to educate you on the differences between power strips, surge protection, and uninterruptible power supplies. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the comments. Otherwise, make sure you like and subscribe, and I really appreciate your support. Thanks so much. We'll see you in the next one.